Hey gang, Ronan here. As you can see, in this game, I am playing the Tier 8 Premium Pan-Asian Destroyer, Lo Yang. And uh, I picked up the Lo Yang a long time ago. There was, uh, there was some kind of special deal that popped up in the Wargaming General Quarters. shop. This was a lot of years ago. And you could get the Lo Yang and the Anshan in a like a package deal. It was either $9.99 or $19.99. And I thought, well, shoot, as a DD guy, why wouldn't I pick up two premium Pan Asian destroyers for this small amount of money? And I did, and the the I'm glad I did the sale. The sale a couple of hours later was no longer available. I think somebody at Wargaming realized, you know what, we may have mispriced these. Uh, so it, it just went away. And uh, anyway, I picked up both ships. Anshan is also very fun. Uh, it's got great guns, very slow turret diverse, and so you need some help there. But uh, back to the Lo Yang. What is the Lo Yang? Well, in a way, it's kind of a, a Benson, a, a U.S. destroyer Benson at the same tier with hydro and, and, and one less gun and some other minor changes. The, the guns are 127s, just like they are on the Benson. Benson gets five of them. The Lo Yang only gets four. But you do have Hydro. Now, that was, that was pretty unique way back in the day. These days, with the, all the Hydro that's in the game, not so much. You've got an entire Royal Navy destroyer line that's got uh, short-range... Hydro that is extremely effective. You can see the Kiev is pushed into the cap. And I tried to get a shot over the top of the island and just completely whipped, making myself invisible to the Kronstadt, which is uh, really not good. Kitakaze, not good. I was able to juke a few shells there and just get some torpedoes in the water. And I'm debating about whether I'm going to have to smoke up or not. Sir. I'm very lucky to avoid some shots, but there is the radar from the Kronstadt, so now I'm just going to have to run away and try and stay angled. Now, it's always risky pushing up when you've got radar in the game, and in this case, we've got uh, the Nevsky and the Kronstadt, both with radar. And I left a nice big gap there for the Kronstadt to run through, but I, I thought I might catch a destroyer, so fingers crossed. Nope. Now, uh, okay, so what have I done so far in the game? Well, I got myself shot up a lot. I've lost a, a little under a third of my HP, right? Started with 17.4, down to 11.7. Uh, back to the guns. Five of them on Benson, four of them on Lo Yang. 3.34 second base reload on both of them. Turret rotation speed. 5.29 seconds for 180 degree turn time on both ships. Firing range 11.55 on the Lo Yang, 10.54 on the Benson. Max dispersion at that range 101 meters for both ships. The HE shells do 1800 damage uh, for both ships with a 5% fire chance. Uh, initial shell velocity 792 meters per second. AP shells do a maximum of 2100. All of these things are same, both Benson and the Lo Yang. And you can see I'm going to try and finish out this uh, this destroyer here. I'm trying to use the guns. Of course, I didn't have to reposition. And man, I'm just... I, I had not played this ship in a very long time. And I thought, you know, what haven't I played in a long time? I haven't played the Lo Yang. So I took it out of the port and decided I'd give it a whirl, and I do manage to pick up first blood, which I feel pretty good about. Now, if you take a look at the scoreboard, we're actually down on points. The red team has two caps. We only have one, though we did manage to sink one of their ships first. Now, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking around here, and I'm saying, who do I have out here helping me? And it's the Aratara, which is a fun ship. I just did a couple of videos on that. Uh, 
and I've got the uh, U4501, but so do they. Now, if I fire here, Cooler First is liable to tear me up, so I'm just going to fall back. You can see our gearing back there. Well, I, I really questioned what the gearing was doing for most of this game. He got behind their lines and was using torpedoes. Ended up being effective, but uh, some questionable moves, in my opinion. You can see. So that sub is moving started. away, and I don't want to get chewed to pieces by the cooler first. You Problem can see solved, the Yeah, there, so I'm going to smoke up and try to just kind of get away. Kev is going to accelerate out from underneath my shells and see if I can't do at least a little bit of damage with these with these four guns. As is typical of the U.S. DD line, the shells are very floaty, so while you have the base range that I mentioned to you, uh, it's really hard to land shells Smoke even set. at that range, which is not torpedoes very high. I've just got to position myself to avoid these torpedoes. I don't want to abandon this smoke. I've still got a minute and 22 seconds left to make use of it. The app has fallen back, so the only thing that could detect me is the sub, and unless he ran straight at me, I don't think he's I have has much of a chance of spotting me initially. Uh, and you know, the more I thought about it, the more I thought, yeah, he's, he's probably, if anything, moved farther away. You can see his nose was pointed north, and I'm going to try and help burn down this core first. Okay, so back to the two ships. The, uh, the torpedoes. Both ships, Benson and Lo Yang, have uh, two quintuple racks, and I do manage to... We've finish off the core first. Uh, so both teams now down three ships. Um, I can't take credit for really either kill. Just happened to finish them off. Um, so two quintuple tubes, both of them with a base reload of 109 seconds, and they're they're uh, MK15s. Both of the ships, the Benson and the Luoyang, 11,600 max damage, 55 knots of speed. So they're very slow, and they both have the same torpedo range, uh, which base is uh, 9.15. You can see on the minimap there, 9.2 is what's showing up with that blue circle around my ship on the minimap. Now I need to help cap our Aditara. Uh, I guess it didn't occur to him to take note of the fact that the Kitakaza was, well, he was what, what is that, Echo 5? And that there might be torpedoes coming through there. There are still, even at this late state of the game, you can see the gearing there, uh, my initial comment about what the heck is he doing. He did manage to put torpedoes on something. But you can see he's, he's on the A-line. He's licking the window up there. Anyway, um, I, I have to try and help with this 4501. The Editara, getting back to that, I, there's still, at this late stage of the game, a lot of players who don't make use of tools that are already built into the game, let alone mods. Now, unfortunately, these oil slicks are there, and they do help you to understand where the sub is. But in this case, I just have it visible because R4501 has it lit up. Now, that's over, but I'm, I'm going to be able to I'm slowing down here. I'm going to be able to just keep landing these depth charges. Splash damage 10, 12, 13, boom, 15 splash damage. Enemy submarine destroyed. <laughs> and that uh, that didn't get better with this most recent change because, from what I understand, uh, in a lot of cases, the depth charges with the airborne attacks at least um, do less damage now. I guess you have a little better range, and maybe have a max have access to them a little more often, but. Uh, Less damage. I'm guessing he's going to come up. So I'm going to throw the torpedoes out there. And then I need to fall back because I don't want to get caught with radar again if I can help it. We've got the cap. Nevsky and Kronstadt heading this way. I'm in radar range of both ships. And this is a recipe for getting blapped. So really, I got too close. There's the radar. And I just have to hope that he's going to turn sideways. I'll just give him incentive. 
And instead of turning sideways to shoot me, he's he's looking back at, presumably at the battleships that are south of me, or maybe the uh, the, the other crunch down that's back there. And now, having got him with a flood, I'm going to see if I can't get him burning. I got to spin the guns around here. If I can get him burning, he'll probably burn down because that'll be a permafire because he just used his damage gun to stop the flooding. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And the sub takes care of him for me. All right, so right now, this is looking pretty good for our team. We are down to seven ships. The red team is down to five. We've still got a sub and three destroyers. They've only got a destroyer, a cruiser, and three battleships. Now, that, to me, that gives us a big advantage. Because we've got the sneaky, stealthy destroyers to lob torpedoes in front of these larger ships, including the Kitakaza. The Kitakaza is not a very maneuverable destroyer. Okay, so to finish up with the the stats on the ship, I mentioned that it's like the Benson, and I, and I keep going back to that because if you played that line, it, whether you liked the Benson or not, this will at least give you a a firm basis for comparison. Max speed of both the Benson and the Loyang, 38 knots. Turning circle radius, 570 meters. Very nimble ship. Rudder ship time, base 2.7 on the Loyang, which is a, a really nice improvement. The Benson, it's four seconds. So you're able to weave in and out around corners and through islands and little gaps and angle yourself to avoid torpedoes much more effectively than you can in the Benson. Uh, surface detectability on both ships 7.16 kilometers and air detectability range 2.88. Now at this point I thought about throwing torpedoes but I think I think that Josep Biver is, is probably going to come back this way and the Kitakaz is already out there. So and why do I think that? Because I think he has to get his nose to the Kansas. Kansas and the Kronstadt together that's a lot of firepower now this game is far from over but with this battleship getting smashed well it's going to tip it very much in our favor and he did turn toward the Kansas and the crunch that as I kind of expected and that's kill number four now I have to tell you I was pretty excited because I was never really a big fan of the Benson uh, the Fletcher, after the Benson, liked that so much more. It just felt more nimble. The, just, it was just a, it's a big improvement. Then you go to the gearing, and the gearing is very different. The gearing is bigger than the Fletcher. It's less maneuverable. And initially, at least, I kept getting myself into situations I couldn't extricate myself from because in the Fletcher, you're able to weave in and out and do a lot of bobbing and weaving, getting in close. And you have to because your torpedoes don't have the same range. Whereas in the gearing, it's a bigger ship less maneuverable and if you get in close you can more often get caught that is less true i think these days than it was say five or six years ago but that's primarily because you don't want to get that close in destroyers very often when there's radar in the game and there's so much more radar in fact so much more uh, long-range hydro you can see my comments to the gearing whether this guy is uh, or this person is a great player or not he certainly contributed in this game and I uh, wanted to be able to acknowledge that. He did get himself a kill. He managed to avoid getting blapped by the Nevsky, which is really not that oh, easy to is do. Inside. And he still got 9,000 HP. Uh, the Yamato, I wasn't really sure what he was going to do. Threw the torpedoes out on a wing and a prayer. And I'm just thinking, Kitakaze uh, still has a lot of HP. I don't really want to get in a straight-up gunfight. But I can use the Hydro to tell everybody where he is. And I'm so glad I did. See, he's going to start backing up. I've got smoke available. He's in my hydro. If he comes around the corner, either way, I can smoke up and put the guns on him. But if he doesn't, I can just keep the guns on him. And maybe finish him that way. I've got three times his HP. I'm going to be able to finish him here. Is and there's the Kraken. Feeling pretty awesome about that. Blown up. 
And I'll just smoke, smoke up here started. and daka daka on the Yamato. Let's see if I can't get some fires burning. If you like the Pan Asian line, uh, the Anshan and the Loyang are, well, they're very fun. They're different. The, the Anshan is very different. It's more like a Russian destroyer, but with uh, better, better torpedoes. And definitely, um, I think most people who play torpedo destroyers would agree that the torpedoes on the Loyang and the Anshan are perhaps a little more effective overall in most games. And the reason I say that is because they're not deep water torpedoes. So you can hit everything with these torpedoes. Whereas with the uh, deep water torpedoes, you can really only hit the bigger ships. So if you're getting close with destroyers, you've got to rely on your guns, you've got to rely on your friends. Oh, Bob, what a waste. But that does cinch the game. The only red ship left is the Nevsky. I'm going to move out here so I can help keep him spotted. I know that he's going to radar me. I just have to hope that I can dodge and weave and keep myself from getting sunk and allowing him another opportunity to stay in the game. Okay, so our gearing. Uh, thank you very much, Warhead Forehead, for the communication. That is a rare thing, and I want to salute that because having a teammate, regardless of their skill level with the game, uh, having a teammate who will communicate and tell you things like that, that they know that might help you, that is just, that's worth, worth its weight in gold. Okay, so now I am in radar range. There's the radar. As soon as he was detected, he knew he could pop that radar. And I'm just going to go nose in here. I'm slowing down because he thinks I'm still rushing at him. Puts his shot a little bit short. I can accelerate, get out ahead of whatever shots are coming. And I'm just trying to dodge. The radar is not going to last that long. I'm still at a range where Problem when the radar is over, I'll be able to go dark instantly, as long as I don't use my guns. Put the torpedoes out. But I'm not going to have enough time, really, for the torpedoes. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Lo Yang. It's a ship that's been around for a really long time. It, it is fun to play, but it's much more difficult to have success with these days than it was when the ship was released. Okay, let's take a look at the after-action stats. I did pick up the Kraken, which you can see, 90,000 damage, 116 hits with the gun, 6 torpedoes, 3 incapacitations, 4 fires, flood. Picked up a capture of a cap and uh, landed 15 depth charges on a sub. That's what it took to sink it. Five kills. Uh, thanks to Poopy Bob in the Kronstadt and uh, our Kitakaza also played a really strong game. Their Nevsky did really well and uh, so did their second place finisher. You can see that I put shots and or torpedoes on quite a few things. It's a fun ship if you enjoy torpedoes and guns in good combination. I think you could probably have fun and make use of this ship on a pretty regular basis. And if you do need a Pan-Asian trainer, this may not be as effective as some because you may decide you want to set up the high-tier Pan-Asian destroyer slightly differently than you do this one. So think about that as you're considering making a premium purchase if you are. Thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I hope you'll like and subscribe, maybe point your friends this way, and I'll see you next time.